Like Dell isn't too happy with the record company president, does it? <laughs> Chip, we're out of here. I'm sorry, guys. Look, I'll call you later. Okay, right, guys. Let's go. Hey, Dell. What did Alan want? Uh, I'm not re-signing with this chicken sandwich label, and he's all bent out of shape about it. I'm not taking any more of that guy's abuse. Look, look don't I have anything to say about this? I mean, we shipped platinum on our last record with him. I, mean, I thought he did better on advanced promotion. I, mean, I thought it was going pretty good. Hey, look, Chip. We started in a garage with my guitar and my songs. Now, while you were out chasing skirts, I made Pacific Coast Highway the hottest act in the country. Hey, look, if you don't like the way I manage things, why don't you just give back the money, your house in Malibu, Ferrari, and Learjets? Hey, Chip, I just don't like a guy like Alan Singer pushing us around. Now, you coming, you're going to take a cab. Now, live and in person, the Hollywood Bowl presents Chip and Dell from Pacific Coast Highway. PCH fan. There's going to be a memorial for Chip Ross at the Oakwood Plaza at 6 o'clock tomorrow night. If Dell is listening, get better, man, because K Bop. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming. And now a new song. Yes? Uh, uh, is this the Riptide Detective Agency? Uh, well, well, yes, yes, it is. And, uh, and I'm one of its uh, chief investigators. Uh, my name is uh, Murray Bazinski, if I may. I'm Candy Lane. I'm president of the PCH Fan Club. This is Daryl Smith. He's our executive vice president. And we would like to speak to you about a case. 
A case? Oh, well, a case. Well, cases are our business, our uh, only business. We are here on the very gravest of matters. It's a very grave matter. Grave? Uh, w won't you sit down? Why don't you just uh, make yourself at home here and uh, uh, can I get you something, a snack or something? I am not here to eat. I'm on a diet. A diet? Yes, well, uh... Now, well, why don't you just tell me all about the case, okay? Our group has been, how shall I put it, has been desperately trying to deliver these flowers and letters and candy to Dell in the hospital, but we can't find out what hospital he's in. Dell. Oh, Dell, uh, the, the singer with the group, Dell. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anyway, the people at A&D Records have been very uncooperative. To say the very least. I mean, we're like his family. We followed him and Chip, God bless his soul, across the continent last year in April. I couldn't go. I'm an accountant and it was tax time, but Darryl, otherwise... please. Ah, isn't that something? Uh, what is it you want us to do? The West Valley chapter of the PCH fan club would like you to find out what hospital he's in and deliver our gifts to him. Is that it? Mr. Bazanovich. Basinski, Murray. We do not view this as a matter to be taken lightly. No, I wasn't taking it lightly. Oh, I'm sure you have your own little ideas about the kind of people who were in fan clubs. No, no. Frustrated people, I'm sure. No, no, no. People who live in reflected glory, no, I'm no. sure. No, no. But we are a part of the apparatus that helps to make stars. Stars? We are a professional organization. We have expenses, we have a budget, and we have responsibilities. I do the accounting. Daryl, please. We want this material delivered, yes or no? Well, we charge uh, $300 a day plus expenses. I will instruct Daryl to pay you $200. Is it a deal? It's a deal. One other thing, not that we don't trust you, but we would like a picture of Dell with the flowers just to make sure that they've been delivered. Well, I, I don't think that's necessary. After all, we are a bonded agency. Yes, and we are a cautious fan club. Tell me it isn't true, Murray. Tell me you didn't put us in the flower delivery business. Yeah, well, listen, you guys weren't there, and Candy was very convincing, you know? Murray, at a reduced rate. As I understand it, we have to find Del Turner, who is scheduled for brain surgery, sneak into his hospital room with flowers and get well cards. Murray, this is not a hot case. Yeah, well, I know, but I gave my word. I said I'd take the case. I'm honor-bound as a detective. Murray, delivering flowers for a fan club? Come on. No, I know, but it didn't take me any time at all to find out what hospital he's in. All I did was call ASCAP. It's the, uh, it's the music society, the writers join. Oh, wow. Well, I found out that he's in Steinholz Hospital, room 309. Now, all we gotta do, guys, is just take the flowers and the stuff over there, take the picture, and we're out of there. Murray. What picture? Oh, well, Candy wants us to take a picture of the flower arrangement and Dell and... Well, you know, she doesn't trust us. She wants to make sure that the delivery gets there. Wait, Murray, you mean we gotta prop up this poor rock star next to this flower arrangement and shoot a picture? I hate that. Well, I don't like that part either, Nick. I don't blame her. Any agency that works this cheap, I wouldn't trust either. Boy, this place looks more like a fortress than a hospital. Are you sure we're gonna be able to get in there? I don't see any reason why not, Murray. Opening doors is simply a matter of choosing the right key, Murray. Piece of cake, yeah. Yeah. How uh, about that brunette, huh? Yeah. Hey, well, how about the blonde? She looks nice. Yeah. Nice? Yeah. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> Let me see what we got in the case. Okay, uh, okay. what do we got? Here? Uh, take here. Glasses? Yeah. Give me Bow the tie. Hey, guys, guys, what mm -hmm. about me, huh? Shouldn't I have a disguise? What am I gonna wear, huh? No, oh, Murray, actually, I think you're perfect. You do? Yep. Yeah, you are, Murray. As a matter of fact, can I borrow your jacket back there? Oh, yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Miss Baker, don't forget to sign out. Oh, sure, I'm sorry. Excuse me, miss, excuse me. Oh, you startled me. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, my name is... Wendell Wicks, and I'm afraid that I'm a little confused because oh, can I... Can I help you? Well, yes. Oh, uh, I appreciate yes. It. I'm Darley Smith, and this is uh, Billy uh, Buckwheat. Who? What? Uh, 
Billy Buckley, you know, like, like it's an awful name, okay? I mean, I like, I know it's an awful name, but like, you know, like I've been kidded unmercifully all my life, you know, like they say, Billy Breakfast shot from guns, you know, it's like, it's really awful, you know? Miss, we're with the executive committee of the PCH fan club, and That's we... nice. No, it's yes. awful. What with poor Chip gone, bless his soul, and poor Dell in a coma in the hospital. Uh, anyway, we need to uh, deliver these flowers and these get well cards to his yeah. hospital room, but the hospital won't let us inside. Yeah, it's like we've called and everything, you know, like we've really been cool, right. but like they've really been unreal with us, you know. Well, this is a private hospital, a research center. I don't think Del Turner is in this hospital. If he was, I would think that I would know. No, he is in there. We know this for a fact. He's in room 309. Absolutely. Wendell, please. I am the president of this fan club. I will do the talking, all right? Listen, we would be willing to pay you real money, as if it were, if you could deliver these things, these get well cards and flowers, to his room. Well, this is my first nursing job. I've only been here a month. But I think I would have heard about his being here. Well, like we at the uh, West Valley PCHFC, okay, we've taken up a collection, you know, we sent some really neat cards and everything, you know, but like, I think that we have a real energy source going here, you know, and like, we just want Del to know about it, you know? Billy, please. Please, yeah. Nick. I, I thought you said his name was Billy. Well, you know, it's like Billy Blackwood, you know, it's an awful name. You know, when you got a name like that, you like, you go for a new name. You know, it's like, it's what happens. Okay? Right. Now, um, we would be willing to pay, as I said, money if you would deliver these. Uh, could you deliver them to his room? Could you do that? Del Turner is really in this hospital? Oh, yeah. I got to tell you, I grew up on Chip and Del. Oh, oh really? You do. Oh, you can. Please, great. Wendell, please, Billy. Well, look, you don't have to pay me anything. If he is in room 309, I'll just take the stuff up there. Oh, oh wonderful. Oh, one, oh, listen, listen. Uh, just one more thing. Uh, we're going to need a picture of the flowers. Yeah. Yeah. With him in it for his fan club, you know, just to make us all feel better, you know? Okay, uh, just give me the stuff. Well, It'll be neat to see him. Yes. <laughs> I think I had every record those guys ever made. Yeah, well, uh, listen, uh, we'll wait here for you, all right? Uh, and don't forget, take the camera and yes. get a picture, all right? Yes. This is crazy. <laughs> right. Really appreciate really, yeah. this. Thank, thank you, you so thank much. You so much. Yeah, well, bless kind. you. Bye. Bye. So long, Bye. Now. Yeah. Listen, listen, guys, I think I handled that perfectly. Please, Murray. What'd you say? Trying to kill me. Who's trying to kill you? What the hell are you doing in here? Who said you could be in here? This is Del Turner. He, he said that they were trying to kill him. He has a cerebral aneurysm. He's delirious. I looked at his pupils. They aren't dilated. It's not like any cerebral aneurysm I've seen. Well, you're wrong. He's scheduled for a massive brain operation tomorrow. But that's not right. Well, you can tell that to Dr. Berenson. Come on. Uh. Doctor, there's trouble. I found one of our obstetric nurses in Mr. Turner's room. Go on. He was coming out at him. I'm afraid he talked to her. Who is she? It's Elizabeth Baker, that pretty blonde. I know her. She's leaving the hospital right now. I'll take care of it. Hey, there she is. Yeah. <laughs> I see her coming now, Doctor. Don't worry, I'll stop her. Excuse me, Miss Baker, I'm going to have to ask you to wait. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to wait. <laughs> Hit it, man. Come on, let's go.
terrific, Cody. We lost him. We really, really lost him. That's neat. Do you mind telling me what's going on? That's a good question. Only we don't have the answer. What I want to know is how the nurse got in there and how Del Turner ended up coming out of the drugs. I don't know. It just happened. I don't like this, Alan. You should have thought of that when you made the deal. I'm aware of that, Alan. And, Doctor, we better take care of Dell right away. As long as he's with us, he can end it all. All right, Alan. I'll schedule surgery first thing in the morning. You'll do the operation. And no slip-ups, because you're in this so deep, they'll put you away forever. It's so strange. I mean, everything that's happened. I'm sorry we got you in trouble, Liz. I really didn't count on delivering those flowers being a life-and-death proposition. You know, ever since I was a child, I wanted to be a nurse. I used to give pretend shots to my teddy bears. It was like a dream to finally get to wear this uniform. Something is going on in that hospital. Something that violates everything that I believe in in medicine. We'll figure it out. I'm just glad I met you guys. Me too. You had me deliver those flowers. Otherwise, we would never know. It's probably going to cost me my job. Yeah. We'll get you out of this somehow. Don't worry, we're good at this work. Why do you do this? I mean, be a private detective? Well, for the money. Oh. <laughs> no, I don't know. I guess I... I get to live life on my own terms. I can... indulge in a, a sense of romance, you know? I still laugh at the absurdities. I don't have to... take any orders from anyone. You know? I make my own road. Now, sometimes that's not so good, but... At least it's never boring. You're a cowboy. You like to ride the ranges. No fences, no master. Are you making fun of me? No. How could I be? We're doing the same thing, Cody. And now We're both trying to live a child's dream. We don't miss a trick in our efforts to be a current high-tech hip agency. Hurry. Hmm? What are you doing? Oh, oh, well, you see, I've been trying to get the robots programmed to do voice prints, and the radio was, uh, has been playing all this PCH music for the last week, so I've been using it to get levels. Now, now this is very, very interesting. You see, you can tell old PCH music from new by the line on this graph right here. Now, a man's voice will drop as he gets older, right? So the earlier hits, like in uh, 69, are in a much higher range than, than, than like this one, recorded in 1979. See, it's actually very fascinating. If you look at the graph, you can see, uh... That's fascinating, Maureen. That's really fascinating. Well, I think it's interesting. Oh, uh, listen, I'm gonna get on the computer now to get uh, into the hospital. Here. Get into the medical records division. Okay. Punch out Del Turner, room 309. Three, yeah, 309. Uh, you know, there's a rumor about a second floor operating team that does secret research, and that some of the men there that practice have lost their license for unauthorized genetic experiments. I didn't pay any attention to it because it was just a rumor. But now, I don't know. Wait a minute, you tell me this hospital makes two-headed cats and stuff like that? Well, it's just a rumor. Uh-huh. Okay, you're the nurse, uh, so now what? Okay, let's scan down the tests. Let's see what they've determined. Blood pressure, EKG, blood tests, all done two weeks ago. Okay, what about a CAT scan? All right, let me look. No, nothing else. They would never do a major brain operation without a CAT scan first. Wait a minute, Murray. What's this? Well, look at this. They've scheduled his operation for 6 a.m. this morning. Operating room 202. That's the floor I was telling you about. It's a high security facility. Hmm. Okay, it's 4 a.m. now. Wait a minute. Something's not right here. You're planning on making a run at this hospital and snatching the surfer off an operating table? Well, it crossed my mind. Well, I think it's a really neat plan, guys. A really neat plan. Look, Nick, in two hours, he goes under the knife. What do you want to do? I never even bought any of his albums. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, guys. How are we going to get in there? Hey, what about Don Gertmania? Well, he makes 6 a.m. pickups. Sure, yeah. We could borrow one of his trucks. He's a good guy. He wouldn't ask any questions. Sure. Oh, wow, this is really neat. This is really neat. We're going to go to Don Gertmanian, right? Right? Who's Don Gertmanian? Oh, 
boy, oh boy. I'm driving a garbage truck. I can't believe it. I'm driving... A, I've always wanted to drive a garbage truck. But this is really boss. I'm driving a gar... I can't believe it. Cowboy, a nurse, and a garbage truck driver. If we add any music, we'll all die laughing. All right, just remember, wave and nod. Don't say anything. Back down. about the overwhelming amount of needless surgery. You turn around, face the wall, and put your hands over your heads. Just stay like that. Face the wall. Turn around, face the wall. Put your hand back up on the wall. Do what he do what he do. Feel any pain? No. Nah. Okay, you can cover up now. Oh well, seems fine to me. Just a little turn up with the anesthetic, but it'll wear off. So there's no reason for brain surgery, right? Oh no, not with a patient with good reflexes and no vomiting and headaches. No, no, it's out of the question. Well, thanks, doctor. We appreciate it. All well, right. just tell your cousin to stay in bed and get plenty of rest and to make sure he wears a helmet the next time he rides a motorcycle. Okay? Yes, See you guys. Happy fishing for me. Bye -bye. Thanks, Bye -bye. Doc. Bye -bye. Always a pleasure, Doc. I can't believe we got Del Turner down in the state room. Oh, it's really unbelievable. I mean, he's going to be so grateful that we saved his <laughs> life, right? You know, there may be a little bit of an honorarium in a project. Yeah, though. right. Hey, <laughs> whose chicken sandwich shirt is this? Uh, well, it's mine. It's one of my favorite shirts. It ain't happening, man. Hey, look, I got to get some new threads. I can't be seen in junk like this. And whose dump is this? Mine. And you admit it? I don't think we're going to be getting an honorarium after all. I'm Cody Allen. Elizabeth Baker. Hello. Murray Bazinski, Nick Ryder. So, you guys got any grass? Grass? Uh, no, no, but we uh, we do have a philodendron up on the deck, but it's not doing very well. The salt Is air... he kidding? No, he's not. We don't do that stuff. Uh-huh. Excuse me. Hello, Mike. Yeah, it's Dell. Yeah, too bad about Chip and all that. Look, do me a favor and uh, get Sid to send me over some uh, white lady and a couple lids of grass. Right, hey, address. Uh, 1625 Bayside Road, King Harbor. Hey, wait a minute, guys. Murray, we're, we're... Murray. That's uh, 1625 Bayside Road, King Harbor. Yeah, and uh, do me a favor, will you? Make it fast. Well, I'm bunking in with a bunch of Martians. <laughs> yeah, all they got is light beer and cold cuts. So... Who are you again, Sugar? Hey. You're a guest here, Mac, okay? That may be a unique idea for you, but try getting used to it, because this is one surfer boy who doesn't give a damn about your record career. Oh, what are you, some kind of hard nose? I am the hard nose. Well, 
Whatever you say. Hey, what's this? That's the memorial album, you know, your, your PCH, uh, you know. I'll be damned. When did this come out? The week after the accident. Ah, Alan Singer, you old son of a gun. You coked out son of a gun. Well, how's this doing? I mean, how are they selling this? The last song's at Chip and Dale, right? The Goodbye album, right? Yeah. This is getting a lot of play, I'll bet. The radio said it shipped platinum. Platinum? <laughs> Dale, you want to let us in on the joke? Tell us what was going on in that hospital. Hospital? Yeah, you know, Steinholtz Hospital. Room 309, that's where we rescued you from. Rescued me? I don't remember any rescue. I, I must have a mental block or something. I don't remember any of this. But you do remember the accident and Chip's death? Oh, yeah, of course, I remember that. Too bad. Ah, uh, well, we all hit the cosmic curve eventually. Hey, Murray. It's gonna be fun having this guy as a guest. We can pull the wings off flies and drown puppies. Neat stuff like that. Come on, boys, we need to talk. Let's go. This guy's a monster. Can you believe it? He calls up his dope connection and orders a package of junk right in front of us. I can't believe that. Yeah, but that, that address you gave, it wasn't our boat. What was it? Police headquarters. That was nice, Nick. Well, the guy was beginning to stir my pleasant nature. <laughs> well, wait a minute, though. That means we have to go to the police, right? Yeah, I think so, boss. See, the way I figured, somebody tried to kill Chip and Dell in that accident. Then when Dell survived, they got him transferred to that hospital. They were going to let his charming personality seep out on the operating table. Wow. Well, that means we have to go to Lieutenant Quinlan, right? Yeah, afraid so. Well, I got an idea. What? Why don't we draw straws and see who gets to take the shaft, huh? You guys are really afraid to see Quinlan, aren't you? What, Quinlan? He's nothing. Yes, I'd like to speak to Alan Singer, please. Alan Singer here. Hello, Alan. Nice try, but I slipped the punch. And we know Dell. We heard about it this morning. Congratulations. Oh, you can say that again, Alan. Because I own you now. Murdering Chip. My attempted murder? You could ride the electric horse. I can put you on death row. And I'm gonna pay for my mistake, right, Dell? Oh, you're so right, Alan. Oh, by the way, I understand we've got a platinum record. Sales are going remarkably well. Well, that's good. Because I want everything, Alan. 100% of the gross. Would you accept my word on that, Dell? <laughs> oh, you're a very funny man. I'll call you back in half an hour and tell you where to meet. You just bring a letter of agreement. Simple English. It just says that Dell Turner gets 100% of the gross sales on the Memorial album. Oh, and uh, bring Shirley. She can notarize. Now, you just sit tight till I get back to you. As you say, Dell. Glad to hear you're feeling better. I hope it lasts. Okay, they're two the same and one short. Okay, I'll pick. My turn. <laughs> oh, well, congratulations. Thank you, Murray. How about two out of three? Well, look, Cody, you love this guy. You and Dina Carlisle picked his record as your song. Now, I think it's only fitting that you go in there and take a two-by-four in the forehead from Quinlan in your attempt to save this idiot's life. Signed it, Shirley's notarized it. You know, I've always loved this park. Just look at all the cops who enjoy eating the lunches. I here. got the point, Dell. Is that what you wanted? Oh, right on. That's my copy. Sign it. Oh, no, no. You keep it. You remember me by. <laughs> enjoy it, Dell. I hope it brings you misery. Oh, don't moan, Alan. It's not becoming.
Hi, Lieutenant. What do you want? I bet that you've been wondering where Del Turner is right now. Del Turner's in the hospital. No, he's not, and I know where he is. Where is he, my guy? Lieutenant, the car just exploded over on Ocean Park. The cops having lunch there phoned it in. They say the guy in the vehicle looks a lot like Del Turner. He's dead. Hold this one on complicity in the murder of Del Turner. Great. Just great. Lieutenant, that was supposed to be a joke. An ill time to I'll admit, but a joke nonetheless. See, when I told you that I know where Del Turner is, that was the setup, and then the punchline was going to be he's in the record store under Folk Singer. <laughs> it's not so funny now that he appears to be dead. You expect me to buy that? Yeah, you have to. You don't have one shred of evidence. Now, if you try and hold me for complicity in this murder, I'm going to sue you and this police department right down to your fuzzy white socks. Alan, how come we keep running into each other? I don't know. It's really a shame for both of us, sir. I really am a good guy, you know. Yeah, I know. Meadows, am I a good guy? Yes, sir. So how can I keep getting tortured by you and Nick that goof off? <clears throat> sir, we better roll on this. What do you want me to do with this guy? My attorney is a killer. Ain't we all? Hey, you guys. Hey, what's up, man? Quinlan came out of there like his pants were on fire. Yeah, I know. Right when I was landing on him, a report came in that Del Turner was murdered in Ocean Park. Oh, his no. car exploded. All right, look. We rescued this rock and roller for a bunch of top 40 reasons, which still sort of confuses me, okay? Now that the guy's been killed, I suggest we head to a neutral corner. Nick, you can't be serious. I mean, this is really a boss case. Now, how often do you get cases like this? And you know, I don't think we should give up this easily. That, that memorial album, now, now there's something about that that just isn't right. I mean, he, even Dell himself, he acted like he didn't even recognize it, right? Right. He's right. Yeah, I know he is. Well, now... Listen, I've got the voice-activated modulator hooked up to the robots, right? Now, why don't we just take this memorial album and run it through that and see what happens, okay? Well, unfortunately, I think it's probably worth a try. Murray, can't you get him to stop dancing? Yeah, well, I would. It's just that I programmed in a rhythm module, and it seems to be short-circuiting with the uh, motor reflex module. Why don't I just uh, punch in and switch to hard copy? You guys really have a lot of equipment here. The robot's really cute. Yeah, dancing robot. One of these days, Mary Martin's gonna swing in here on a vine and take us all to Camarillo. Oh, wow. Way to go, robots. That's really boss. Murray, can you turn him off, please? He's celebrating or something. He's cutting a hole in the deck. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, robot's off. What do you have, Murray? This is amazing. This is fascinating. You know, this record was not recorded by Chip and Dell. As a matter of fact, their voices aren't even on the album. You see, it's a different voice print altogether. In fact, it's one singer trying to imitate Chip and Dell's voice. Look at this. Okay, who would profit most by this memorial album? A and B Records. Right. That would be Alan Singer, the president. So he killed Chip and Dell, and he released his counterfeit album. Yeah, well, it sounds like a perfect motive for murder to me. I mean, A and B Records kills Chip and Dell, right? Because they're not going to get any more albums out of them. And then they release this bogus memorial album and make a lot of money. Sounds perfect. Yeah, but how are you going to prove all this? Well, first, we've got to find this guy who laid down the tracks. Can the robots do that, Murray? Well, I'll ask. I'll just uh, I'll punch in a request and, and see what comes back, OK? Yeah, no, no, uh... Okay, here we go. Highest possibility would be for existing member of background group. I have many records in file. Would you like me to search for a voice print match? Yes. Huh. Yes. Yes. Come on, Murray. Tell him yes. Will oh, you run yeah, the scan? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Voice match, third backup singer on Dream Girl album. The guy's name is Pete Frank. In the group, they called him Hot Dog. 
Mr. Singer, it just seems utterly impossible that this could be the case. Now, it is absolutely imperative that we speak to the hot dog immediately. Okay, like, I'm the fan club's senior vice president in charge of the newsletter, right? Okay, like, I don't believe this for a minute. You know, like I said to Wendell, I said, Wendell, I don't believe this for a minute. You know, like the whole thing about, like, that memorial album, man. It's like, you know. He called me, Billy, he called me. He did call me. The hot dog called me. He said he wanted to confess. Look, uh, Mr. Wicks, was it? Wasn't his. I appreciate you fellas coming to me with this, but, see, Pete's... How shall I say? Pete has a little problem with his nose. Oh, asthma, right? Cocaine. Oh, wow, man. Oh. Now, I know you guys don't want to kick dirt on the memory of the PCH, so it's probably better for all of us if we just let this slip into the past very quietly. Mr. Singer, it just all seems so, so terribly tragic. I mean, just yesterday, they were so much with us, so much a part of our lives, and now today, today we have accusations by one of their backup singers that he did the memorial album. Now, Mr. Singer, I just don't know what to do. Oh, well, you both did the right thing by coming to me. Oh, wait, this guy was using cocaine, Mr. Singer? I mean, you're saying that the PCH was drugged up? Like, I've had articles in the newsletter stating that they were against that sort of thing, man. Look, Billy, you seem like a nice, fairly hip guy. What do you want to be in a fan club for? Why don't you guys just go live your lives? Forget the PCH. It's over. Right. End of an era, right? A wonderful, beautiful, romantic era, man. Please, Buckwheat. It will never be over as long as their music remains with us. No. Goodbye. Good luck. Thanks, man. Bob, come in here. What's up? Pete Frank is talking. He called up a couple of goofs from a fan club. Told him he wanted to confess. We were going to do him anyway. I just thought it'd uh, be better if guys in this group didn't start keeling over like ten pins. He'll be at the Candlelight Memorial. I'll go with you. We'll pick him up. The hot dog's about to be roasted. <laughs> Singer over there in his car, right? He starts to take off off the horn. Okay, you got it. Let's go. After the service, man. Now, let's go. He killed him, didn't he? Shut up. He killed Dell, didn't he? Shut up. Look out! He's got a gun. Get out of my way. Hey, don't let me get hot dog. Where's that guy?
Peter, you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm all right. Some fan club we got, huh? He's number one with a bullet. That's true, you know. I mean, it's really gnarly, man, but uh, like you're in Dead Endsville, okay? Steinholz Hospital continue, and members of the nursing staff are questioned, it appears that certain licensed doctors performed operations which are deemed unsafe by the medical community. Dr. Berenson, among others, has been jailed. In a related story, murder indictments were handed down today for Alan Singer and other executives of A&B Records. Felicia Adams will have that story on news break at 10. And weather... All right. <laughs> we did it. We got them all. Well, I just want to say that I, for one, am very, very proud that we solved this case. Not only did we save your life, but we saved the life of Pete Frank. And I just want to say, guys, it is a boss and bodacious business we're in, huh? <laughs> well, since business is so boss and bodacious, what do you say we take care of this? Uh... Here's your total. <sighs> Oh, uh, wait a minute, Max. Is it this high already? Mm-hmm. But I'll make a deal with you. See, I have this little problem over at Table 5. And if you'd be willing to help me out, I'd give you a two-week grace period on the bill. Max, don't you have bouncers to take care of the drunks in this place? Mm-hmm. But he's not a drunk. He's your favorite police lieutenant. Quinlan? He looks as drunk as a skunk. Well, he's not drunk. The bartender doesn't like him, so he slipped a Mickey in his diet soda. Hey, Nick. Why didn't we ever think of that? I don't know. Come on, guys. Will you get him out of here before I have to scrape him up off the carpet? Excuse us, Elizabeth. So, he just drops the package and leaves. How am I supposed to know what's in it, huh? How you doing, Lieutenant? Well, look what we got here. Three great American heroes. These are the guys that uh, made the case. I mean... Ain't we a lucky bunch of suckers? Yes, <laughs> Lieutenant, we certainly are a lucky bunch of suckers. Now, if you come outside with us, you can tell us just how lucky we are. Huh? Yeah, yeah, bring your diet soda. That's good. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, bring, yeah, yeah, bring it on. You got all the diet soda. And I'm a good one. Yes, yeah, you are. I don't know why I take a fuse like from people like you. Yeah, uh, but don't answer that, Nick. <laughs> Lieutenant, what happened? I'm not going to tell you cruds what happened. Well, I'll tell you what happened. Okay. What happened was... After you humiliated me in my old apartment, this beach boy comes delivering three ounces of cocaine to the police lobby. No. Yeah, he throws it in there and then rams. It's like, bam. Fifteen minutes later, my career goes, bam. Really? That's wonderful. How'd that happen? Really? That's how wonderful. That? How'd that happen? Well, I'm going to tell you how it happened. Okay. All right. All right. What happened was this guy dumps that stuff and he runs the bag, tears. There's a white lady floating all over the police department. Oh, oh Lieutenant. Yeah, it gets up in the air condition. Oh, no. Yeah. The shift, my shift, mm -hmm. gets stoned right out of their gorbs. Half of them went to the hospital. You know what happens to Quinlan? What? Three days suspension, no pay. Oh. There is no justice. You guys are beautiful beach boys. Tell me, why would a beach boy deliver three ounces of cocaine to the police lot? <laughs> well, huh? well, Lieutenant, you're just inside the curl, that's all.